Hello everybody, my name is Laurence Delplace and I am happy to present you our beautiful metro project in Brussels, the Metro Line 3. Amberg has been actively working on this project already since 2013 and I hope I can illustrate some of our metro competencies with this project. Let's start with some facts. The contracting authority is Belleris and the owner is the STIP, the public transport operator, operator of the city of Brussels. Hamburg is part of the de designer joint venture, BMN, which stands for Bureau Metro Nord. This joint venture also comprises Sweco, TPF and Van Kampenot Architect. We have been awarded with a complete mission from pre-feasibility studies to job site supervision. The overall costs of the operation are estimated at about 850 million euros. The new metro line is crossing a very dense neighborhood, namely the suburbs of Scarbeck and of Ever on this side. The extension of the Metro Line 3 starts at the North Railway Station and goes all the way up to Bordeaux. The existing line in the south is at the moment operated as a pre-metro between Albert and the North Railway Station. This section will be converted to a metro in a different phase and is not part of our mission. Some numbers. We are talking about a 4.5 kilometer section of new automatic metro line that will be built through a very dense urban area. The board tunnel section is 4.3 kilometers long and is connected to the existing line with a 200 meter long underground structure that will be built below the railway grid of a major railway station in Brussels. Coming back to the slides before, we can see that this underground section will be here just after uh, the North railway station. All 12, 12 railway tracks will remain in operation during the construction of this structure. The project also comprises a depot and maintenance center uh, on the northern part of the project, and this is illustrated on this picture. Oops, sorry. From a geological point of view, the project mainly lays in the ground from the tertiary, including coarse sands from the Brusseland formation, clay sands from the tilt formation, and sandy clay from the Cortaic formation. The main challenges are the high degree of urbanization and the presence of buildings, historical buildings, sewage, utilities, and rail railways in the perimeter of the project. The control and minimization of the settlements will be of paramount importance. The board tunnel consists of a 10 meter diameter single board tunnel with a 40 centimeter thick segmental lining. The tunneling work will start at P0 on the site of the depot and, um, and uh, of the depot and maintenance center, and the TBM will be drilling south in direction of the city center. So actually the density of urbanization is increasing together with the TBM uh, drilling to the, to the city center. The overburden are ranging typically between eight and 24 meters uh, measured at Crown and the water level is relatively high and is about 2.5 bar at Chrome. There is not a big history in TBM tunneling with this kind of diameter in Belgium. Uh, actually, this is the first time that a 10 meter diameter TBM will be drilling in the city center of Brussels. So there is like a fear, maybe not a fear, but a big respect from the government and population. And as a result, the settlement control and minimization are a big requirement on this project. During the various phase, Hamburg performed different kind of settlement calculation. During the basic design, this included empirical calculation every 100 meters using PEX equation. During the detailed design, we performed 2D FEM calculation, calculation on the most sensitive, sensitive buildings. We calibrated the 2D model with a 3D plexus model. It was then possible to define mitigation measures a range of operating pressure for the TBM and also define the monitoring program for the almost 1,600 buildings in the perimeter of the project. All stations will be built before the crossing of the TBM. So this means that the TBM will arrive in an open box at each station. Due to the limited space available, the standard ground treatments solution to allow for safe arrival of the TBM are not applicable in this case. It was thus decided, when possible, to use a reusable confining steel frame 
or in case of special space rest restriction in the station, to use a concrete block directly poured inside the station. An interesting aspect is the arrival of the TBM in the shaft P5, where the TBM needs to be disassembled. It is a very small shaft with very limited space available. The groundwater is quite high and the combination of restricted available space and dense urbanization makes it impossible to apply the standard solution to guarantee safe access of the TBM. A chosen solution consists in having the TBM break through in a flooded shaft. All sealing works will then be performed underwater by divers. The cutting wheel is removed in pieces through the shaft opening and the shift the, and the shield will be abandoned and concreted in the tunnel. All heavy components and backup system are then transported backwards to the um, launching shaft. The seven new stations are built in a particularly dense environment. Four of those stations are uh, very particular as they are, as, as they are to be built under very uh, restricted space limitation and near or below historical buildings or train and tram tracks. We're talking here about the city hall of Scarbrick or the Holy Family Church of Riga. The three other stations with less requirements will be built using standard cut and cover techniques. Those will not be um, discussed in detail here, as I prefer to show uh, the specific solution developed for the four uh, very complex stations, which are Litz, Collignon, Verbukoven, and P. Urban density combined with near surface water level together with this, the impossibility of urban drawdown has led us to define a solution based on ground freezing. From the early phase of the, of the project to the awarding, the concept of ground freezing zone has evolved from a ground freezing arch to a rectangular section. So this was the, the early design and at the end the, the chosen design. This section is composed by a micro TBM tunnel horizontal and inclined freezing walls and tubes and a system of compensation grouting to mitigate the settlements. Regarding the ground freezing solution, the platform zones, which are not accessible from, from the surface, will be executed, executed using a combination of, on the, of those micro tunneling pipes here on the roof, as you can see, timbered trenches and jet grouting to create a strong and sealed structure. The advantages of these methods are the following. The final roof structure is based transversely directly on the vertical lateral walls. Slab deformations and settlement will be manageable by the use of intermediary supports and jacks. Various elements can be realized simultaneously. This re reduces the duration of the work. The roof slab are made by passes which allow to keep acceptable deformations. Micro TBMs are carried out from the cut and cover shafts. Brussels Metro North is a complex project that BMN as a joint venture uh, of Sweco Belgium, Omberg Engineering, TPF and Van Kampenhout architect has the chance to, to design and follow through all the phases since its very, be its very beginning. The whole team is working since more than eight years on this uh, highly complex and interface project. The success uh, of it lies in a big focus on risk management and mitigation. Another key, key factor to this success is the integration of the whole team at Sweco's headquarters in Brussels. This allows for optimal communication inside the team and towards the clients. Thanks a lot for your attention. Hi, I'm Cristina Romani, and since I started at Amber Engineering, I have worked on several metro projects in different cities, as Paris, Brussels or Lisbon. I love this work and how funny and interesting can it be. I am really enjoying this opportunity and I'm happy to know that I'm contributing to a better future. For me, Metro projects are very interesting overall because of the impact and technical challenge they represent. Developing the transportation net in big international cities or metropoles has such a huge economic and social impact. So I find it nice to think uh, that they contribute to it and uh, make this way some people lives and uh, consequently the world a little bit better. On the other side, 
I get the chance to work in an international and multidisciplinary team, supporting me to grow personally and also uh, professionally. The mix of different uh, languages, cultural backgrounds, as well as problem-solving strategies, for example, helps me to expand my personal horizon. Then, the technical complexity of metro projects motivates me and allows me to improve as an engineer. In the Brussels Metanode project, for example, where I worked for three years as a structural and geotechnical engineer, the tunnel underpasses uh, dense urban areas, even historical buildings, um, in, in changing uh, geological conditions underneath the, the groundwater. So the risks and uh, boundary conditions are very project specific and can be very diverse. So and so they are also the the project or the design solutions we need to find. This can be very motivating and interesting in my opinion. Working in Amming Engineering on projects around the globe and since we often develop them uh, in different country offices at the same time gives me the chance to be part of an international qualified project team which fits quite well with the general demands of metal projects.